Oh, hi. Uh, this week's roundup we have conference badges, 3D printers, audio boards, a bunch of new SBCs, and a really tired mic. First up, on Kickstarter, there's a DIN rail mountable enclosure for the Raspberry Pi. It's not just a plastic case, but also contains an expansion slot, RS-485, RS-232 transceiver, small prototyping area, a bunch of opto-isolated GPIOs, and a 5 volt 2 amp power supply, which is powered from mains. Nice unit if you're getting serious about home automation. The DACBerry amp is a small board that provides I2S audio and either a 6 watt or 20 watt amplifier. It uses a PCM5102 chip, which is capable of 192kHz at 24 bits, and can fit onto any Pi you have. This next one is a small project aimed at STEM education that comes in kit form. It contains a small DC water pump, power supply, breadboard, and a bunch of other things for kids to learn how to annoy their parents even further. Note that this kit doesn't contain the Raspberry Pi. If you've ever been to any conferences, especially those that involve electronic makers, You'll have noticed that everyone is upping the ante with creative name badges. Well, you can get this one, which contains a Freescale KW01 MCU running at 48MHz with Chibos Real-Time OS installed, 12-bit DAC, 320x240 TFT touch display, 4GB SD buttons, LEDs, and an 815MHz RF chip, so you can play a multiplayer game with opponents. There's also this one, which is based on the Rigado BMD300 SOC, which is based on the NRF52832 Bluetooth chip. It also contains an NRF52 Cortex-M4F, 128x128 LCD, and a few sensors. Well, seems like the old days of scribbling your name on a sticky note are gone. Continuing the gaming theme, you would have seen this one a while back. They've taken the classic game of Pong and made it into a coffee table where the bat and ball are moved around by magnets, and simulates the original game pretty well. But before you get too excited, check the price tag. Another blast from the past, this small board provides a MIDI interface that emulates the sounds of the original Nintendo video game console. This one is the second iteration of a successful Kickstarter last year. A small change of pace with a Snapmaker, which is an all-metal 3D printer that you can also attach laser engraving and CNC cutting heads. It's a modular design to cut down on shipping costs and comes with touchscreen control and their very own Snap 3D printing software. It's capable of 50 micron resolution on a 125mm cubed heat bed that they claim levels automatically. For $300 US, it seems to be a pretty solid printer. For €199, Euros, you can also pick up the Nero 1, which is a 6-axis robotic arm that talks over Ethernet, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth or USB to Android or iOS phones and even has an inbuilt web app. Runs off a 12 volt 7 amp DC power supply and contains a Pi 3 and Arduino Mega. It claims 500 micron repeatability, so it can't be used for things like pick and place, but has a number of different heads such as grippers, electromagnet, vacuum pump, pen holder and DC motor. Unback is back with a bolt on board that will convert your old analog camera into a digital one using a Pi, Arduino, Omega 2 or whatever you have lying around. If you have an old camera and interested in photography, this looks pretty good. The other thing that's good is the big improvement over his last campaign video, which was pretty horrible. Good to see he's back again. Jotto looks like a fun product, but I think it's a little too pricey. For 165 British pounds, you get an internet connected whiteboard that you can send messages to. Great concept, but too expensive for me. Looks like I'll have to publish a video on how to do it yourself much cheaper. Nothing interesting on Indiegogo or Crowd Supply this week, but here's a bunch of new SVCs on the market, and a couple that will be launched soon. Connect Tech have come out with several carrier boards for the Jetson TX1 and TX2, called the Cogswell, Spacely, and Sprocket. The Cogswell has 5 gigabit Ethernet ports with power over Ethernet designed for vision analysis. The Spacely has 6 MIPI CSI and connectivity to Pixhawk Autopilot board and the sprocket is a tiny carrier board that just fits the Jetson board. All of them come with a bucket load of GPIO options. Aon will soon be releasing the Ricoh 3288 SBC, which runs the Rockchip RX3288 quad-core ARM Cortex A17 at 1.6 GHz. Also contains 16 gigs eMMC, 2 gigs DDR3 RAM, SD slot, gigabit Ethernet, mini PCIe, and dual LCD and HDMI. 
Looks like an interesting board, but I'm betting the price tag will be around the $150 US mark. Hot on the heels of the UP2, there will be a smaller footprint board called the UP Core. For the 65mm by 56mm size, they are packing in a quad core Intel X5Z8350 at 1.6GHz, 4GB DDR3 RAM, 64GB EMC, HDMI, EDP, 2 MIPI CSI, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, RTC, USB 2.0 and USB 3.0, all running off an expanded 4 amp 5V DC supply. This one will be a screamer and I'm looking forward to reviewing it. Then Friendly Elec, or Friendly Arm, have a new update on the NanoPi Neo, called the NanoPi Neo 2. Contains all the same bits as the original Neo, with all winner H5, 512MB DDR3 RAM, USB 2 and SD slot, but now has Gigabit Ethernet. It's still a headless SBC, but bang for the buck is pretty good. I'll be reviewing this one, so stay tuned. The humble Orange Pi has now joined up forces with Canonical to build an Orange Pi app store based on Ubuntu Core to allow people to download apps called Snaps. This is a good move for Orange Pi and opens up a lot more options for IoT development. Speaking of Orange Pi, we now have a new board called, inventively, the Orange Pi Zero Plus 2. This one abandons the H2 Plus in favour of the H3 and also adds in HDMI and a newer Wi-Fi chip based on the Ampac AP6212. This means no more iffy Wi-Fi. Tindy has a few interesting things. This small GPS tracker runs off 3.7 to 5 volts and can log all GPS data to an SD card. One of those things you just set and forget. This small board has an ESP8266 on board along with LiPo battery management. The creator claims to be able to run it for 17 hours from a 3 amp hour LiPo. Slush Engine Model D is a step up from the Model X, but can control 7 steppers, 3 of them at 20 amps and 4 at 5 amps, running off 9 to 35 volts. That's a fair amount of kick and will be suitable for things like CNC machines. If you want to debug your SAM D11 MCU, then this is another alternative to the official debugger. Supports most of the CMSIS DAP tools such as EDBG, OpenOCD and IAR, but not Admiral Studio. This is another blast from the past. The RC2014 is a Z80 based computer. If you have used the Z80 at all, you'll know about its limited memory space. This is a module that will page in additional memory on demand for your RC2014, thereby increasing the effective memory space. Sometimes you just need a device to sit outside and run forever. This board is based on the RTL8710, but also has solar powered battery charging for a LiPo. It also contains a Bosch BME280 sensor with temperature, humidity and pressure. This is another board with solar powered battery charging, but it's designed for the Pi Zero. It also provides additional GPIOs, USB port, Ethernet socket and RTC. This board is the outcome of a successful kickstart in 2015. The Duino 32 is pretty much the same as the Duino with a small OLED, but this one uses the ESP32 instead of the ESP8266. IT have an ultra low power Wi-Fi module which is based on the ESP8285. Supports all the Wi-Fi modes at data rates up to 460 kilobits per second. This Arduino Zero compatible board can act as a gateway to SenseBand sensors. Contains a SAMD21 at its core with SD slot and USB and can interface to NRF24L01 chips or RFM69 radios. The BeagleBone Blue is the same as the BeagleBone Wireless except is targeted towards robotics. Contains the Octavo OSD3358 SIP, 4 gigs eMMC, SD slot, USB, 10 DOF IMU, WL1835 mod based Wi-Fi, 2 cell LiPo battery management and can control 8 servos and 4 DC motors up to 4 amps. You can also get it from Mouser if it's out of stock at Seed. You can also get an RFM95 and RFM98 LoRa module from Seed which are pretty nice LoRa transceivers consuming only 10 milliamps in operation at up to 300 kilobits per second. The Aster watch looks interesting. It runs a MediaTek MT2502D Bluetooth module with 240 by 240 color LCD, onboard microphone and a bunch of GPIO options all running off a standard 3.7 volt LiPo. Over at Adafruit they have a small distance rangefinder that's capable of sensing from 5mm to 50mm at 400Hz sampling rate. That's pretty fast. 
Spark Fun have their TNZ View In, which is a 128 by 32 monochrome OLED add-on for your TNZ, based on the SSD1306 chip. Can be used on any of the TNZ3 series of boards. And they also have in stock the BeagleBone Black Wireless. Over at Banggood, there's a fairly decent solar panel charging controller, capable of 20 amps at 12 or 24 volts, with lightning, over voltage and overcharge protection and a key wireless charging board capable of spitting out 1.5 amps at 5 volts. And this board provides a LiPo backed 5 port hub designed to attach to a Raspberry Pi. It uses a 1. amp hour battery but lacks any power management, so you can't shut down when the battery gets low. And similar to last week's learner kit, this one has a bunch of stuff that would cost more if you were buying it separately. Matt, this was a difficult week for me, getting this video out with lightning strikes, flooding and moving data over to a new NAS device. But anyway, got there in the end. If you know of any other online stores I should be looking at, then let me know in the comments below and I'll add it to the list. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you next week.